What is going on guys? Name is here bringing you guys a brand new video. Baby, let's get it. We are now down to the top 10 Call of Duty players of all time. Now I know it took me some time to release this video. Hey man, but it's finally here. So drop what you think in the comments below. We'll have some more videos coming soon. But first I got to do a quick plug. So thanks to you guys and all my fans and people who supported me over the years, I have been nominated for Analyst of the Year on the Esports Awards. I'm so excited for this and I'm so grateful to be recognized once again. This is the second year in a row. Last year we lost, but it was just fantastic to be up there amongst all those great people. And now I'm there once again, thanks to you guys. I appreciate it. You guys know the amount of work I put in, especially on the broadcast. Uh, it, it, a lot goes into it, man. So it feels good to get recognized and hopefully this year we can take the dub. So. If you guys want to vote for me and support me even further, your vote goes a long way. The link will be in the description below. It takes two seconds. Go vote for who you think deserves it, which I hope that's me. But uh, I'll see you guys on the award show. That is going to be in like November or something like that. Uh, and either way, it'll be a great time being with the people who just uh, do great things for this industry. And then also uh, you guys will have a chance to watch it for the people who support us. Thank you so much. Uh, but let's get into this video. At number 10, we have Apathy. Now, first I wanna say, Apathy, shout out to you. You had a hell of a career. One of my favorite people I've ever teamed with. We didn't have a lot of success together, but he was an amazing teammate, super driven, always ready to go the extra mile in practice. Um, and the guy had a ton of success. I mean, he competed for a long time. Uh, dating back to like Black Ops 1 where he was pretty dang good. Uh, but thinking about App's career, I mean, he has two world championships. Uh, he's a six-time champion, a nine-year tenure with like one break in between that. Like the guy had a crazy career and at world championships is when he was at his best. So given his individual skill and how good he was at his peak in like Black Ops 3 and those games, he was so damn good having two world championships. And I personally think he was the best player on that EG roster as well that went off and won that champs unexpectedly having two world championships, he had to be in the top 10. So for App coming in at number 10, hell of a career. Uh, and it'll take a lot for somebody to come in and overtake his spot at number 10, but that's where he's gonna be at on my list. At number nine, we have JCap. Now everybody knows JCap competed for a hell of a long time and JCap, two-time world champion, two-time champs runner up. So he has four champs finals appearances, nine-time champion. like. Four times JCap made it into the World Championship final. That is insane. It was like the World Championship at one point was synonymous with JCap's name. You knew he was going to be up there in some fashion. And if he was there, he was more than likely going to win it. He did it with so many different players. And he was just a great player from start to finish. I mean, he was competing with the best of them in every single game. Uh, when you think about respawn and how to play it and the strategies that were involved in Hardpointer and CTF, it was JCap. He was the most, and this is facts, guys. This is absolute facts. He was the most fundamentally sound Call of Duty player we have ever seen grace the sticks, ever. In the history of Call of Duty, he is the foundation. He was the model of fundamentals. When you had to learn what you needed to do as an AR player, he was the guy that you watched. Your favorite player watched JCap. Your favorite player tried to emulate what he was doing in certain game modes. When they were in a rut, they were like, how is JCap? being so consistent. Now, towards the end of his career, yes, he was a little bit of, of an inconsistent player in terms of slaying and getting the kills. Once the talent got a little bit better and he fell off a little bit, but he was still placing well. People would count him out, say he sucked. Well, what would happen? He would make it to a finals or he would win or he put himself surrounded by players who would catapult him to a victory. So for me, JCap, absolutely a top 10 player of all time. Number nine, fundamentally sound, deserves to be on this list. Number eight, all right, so number eight, we have a BZ, and it's just insane, these phase guys, like how fast they shot up the list and where they have to be. I mean, you look at a BZ, uh, this guy's an eight-time champion, like two-time world champion, champs runner-up. Uh, he's just an unreal talent, man. Uh, he's only been playing for three years, three years, and this guy has already done that. Like, think about a BZ and what he's able to do on the map. I don't think there's ever been a player outside of maybe Skump who's been that good of an entry player in their prime. And he's been doing it for three years straight. Abizi is so good. And for that individual talent, and he already has the accolades to back it up. Like he has the amount of championships a lot of these guys do in the top 10. He absolutely deserves to be here. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, well, where do they fall at on the top list? Well, they're already top 10. It's indisputable. You look at this guy's statistics and what he's been able to do individually on his team, the championships they have at world championships, everything, the boxes are all checked. He 100% deserves to be on the list. Number eight, Abizi. And his teammate, the Tiny Terror duo coming in at number seven, it's Simp. Now, I personally think when it is all said and done, Simp will be the GOAT. 
Um, as long as Call of Duty continues to have esports for years and years and years, Simp will end up being the go. I don't think this guy has any chance of slowing down uh, where Call of Duty is right now. It's at a point where uh, these guys, their ability to play longer is just going to get longer and longer. They have the facilities to support them, uh, support the, the long schedules they have, the grind schedules they have. I mean, they have people that are making them food, right? Like they have nothing to worry about other than Call of Duty. Uh, and I think that it puts them in a position to succeed. Um, so for Simp, I mean, two-time world championship, two-time world champion, literal best in the game, multiple time MVP and an eight, eight time champion overall, like there's going to be so much more added to this list. So for right now, he comes in at number seven. At number six, we have Patty Aches. Let's go, man. Uh, Aches, this guy has what? 18 plus championships. He played for eight years, two-time world champion. Uh, Aches, he did it time and time again. I mean, the villain. Uh, just the, the amount of pressure that Aches dealt with opposed to most other pro players. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. He talks so much crap. He's been, uh, he, he's been a, a, an outspoken figure in our community. Uh, and he was a part of that Cole dynasty and he was at the forefront of it. And the reason Aches is at number six is because he has the accolades to back it up, but his individual skill was just ridiculous. Uh, he was uh, an absolute animal. You know, I have to give him the shout out. I mean, Black Ops 2, the guy was unreal. Ghost, the guy was unreal. Case for best player in the game in Black Ops 2 and in Ghost. And honestly, in Black Ops 1 as well, there was a case for him to be the best in the game. So uh, at least at some point. So for Aches, getting it done time and time again. And then when people counted him out most, uh, I mean, you think about when he went to that phase team and he had that crazy win where he came back and um and, and with a with a messed up hand and won the championship against the og dynasty and then you think about how he won the world championship with eg and nobody thought that that was possible aches is just that villain man who always got it done and he was he's such a legendary player so coming in at number six i have patty aches number five we have formal you guys saw my video on formal retiring i think very highly of this guy 25 plus championships world champion champs mvp has the accolades to back it up part of the optic dynasty uh he was on my team where he was the best player in the game it just seemed like when formal entered the scene he was the best player in the game at some point for like three four years he dominated uh when og was having those issues when they weren't winning championships and they had that stigma of not being able to win a world championship he went out and said all right i'm just gonna go off and just put this a whole statement and everything to bed and he had an mvp performance like none other i have never seen an individual performance as good as formal at iw champs and for that he is in the number five spot formal absolute phenomenal player unreal talent number five at number four we have scump 30 plus championships world championship multiple mvps 10 year tenure the guy's been competing forever and he's been competing with the heart in the hardest role to like stay that good at for that long like he's been an smg player who's had to be like the go off superstar player and he's been doing it for a long time like he's had some stints in his career where it hasn't been as great but you got to think about the feat that this guy has accomplished 10 years guys he's been the, he's been that guy uh I've counted Scump out. Plenty of people have at times, and he always surpasses what you think of him. You, you'll say he, he wasn't a good search player. Well, what'll happen? He'll be like the best search player for a three month period. You'll say that his respawn spawn off, and then he'll turn up and drop a 50 on the best team in the game. Like Scump is just the guy who he's a freak, man. He has a freak talent, and he's able to continue it get into each game. Uh, and he will consistently be on a team that people think can compete for a championship. Uh, because of how good he is and he makes the people around him better as well uh, so for scump number four his career is insane i remember when he first came into the call of duty scene um back in, in mw2 and he was a scumper jumper and he was frying with the acr just dominating across map uh it was just crazy man uh, i played with him a little bit at the beginning of black ops one he was the best player in that game too uh best player in like mw3 best player in so many different games it was scump so he is number four on my list. Uh, a couple more world championships, and he may shoot on up uh, to the top three somewhere. Uh, but number three, this is reserved for an elite club. All right, this is the three-time world championship club. We got Clayster coming in at three. Three world championships, 10-year, 10-year, 20 championships. The old man does it time and time again. He's surrounded himself with great players. He's been a great player. He is just unbelievable, man. This guy as a leader, he's so good. Uh, he's the underdog every time, and... What's special about him as well, on top of the accolades that he has, is the situations that he gets put in and how he's able to rise above it and still have success. Uh, it takes a lot of mental fortitude to do that. Um, and a lot of people aren't built for that. The guy's just, he, he thinks differently than everyone else. Uh, he has to, otherwise he wouldn't have had this much success. So big shout out to Clay coming in at number three. That's my boy. Number two, we got Karma. Three-time world championship. He's been a part of like the three dynasties is what we call them in 20 chips. I mean, 
I guess a lot of people called for Rico Impact the Dynasty, but when you really look at the statistics, it wasn't actually one because it was only four um, titles in a row, but people did call them like a dynasty. So I'm putting the three dynasties, which is complexity, optic, and then for Rico. Uh, and he's been a part of all three of them. Uh, and he won championships with all three of them. And he won a world championship with all three of them. Uh, there's a constant with when you think about these world championships in that time. And it was like J Cap, Karma, Krim. Those are the three guys. And Karma has three of them. Uh, he deserves to be here. He was the MVP in Black Ops 2. Uh, he was an integral part of uh, both those rosters when you look at complexity and then when you look at uh, OG. Everybody wanted them on, on, on their team. And he had such an unorthodox play style where he just flustered other, other teams. Nobody really could ever understand how he played the game. Uh, he was an extremely intellectual player. He could slay. He could play objective. He switched his role around maybe more than any other superstar player in the history of COD. And uh, for that reason, I mean, he's just number two. Uh, a lot of people have Damon as their GOAT. I think Damon and Krim are interchangeable, but I guess since Krim is still playing, that is why he gets my number one spot. Krim, 34 plus championships, multiple MVPs, three-time world championship, and part of two dynasties. Krim, this guy, I think this guy is just the FPS GOAT. Uh, I, th I Like playing against him in his prime was was terrifying. Like, honestly, like I, you guys know me. I was, if you remember when I competed, I was delusionally confident, but going up against Krim, it was like, okay, this is going to be a tough match. I never had that feeling against anyone else. Like Krim was a extremely tough player to play against. He would take over games and just destroy your team. Like in his prime, People like people look at Simp and they're like, okay, Simp, best player in the game. Like that guy must be a nightmare to play against. And yes, I've never played against Simp really outside of SD tournaments, but I've played against Krim. And I'll tell you what, it was it looked worse than what I'm seeing Simp do to some people. Uh but yeah, Krim, he's been competing for a very long time. Uh he's won a ton of championships. Uh, everybody wanted him on their team uh, at some point. Everybody probably still wants him on their team for the most part. Uh, and he's still getting it done. He's still building solid roster. He's still placing very well. And he's still having individually great performances. Uh, the guy is just, he's like the Jordan of COD, man. He's been competing forever. He's been dominating forever. And he is the GOAT of COD, point blank, period. Uh, but yeah, that's the top 10. That's officially the top 30. Now, this list will obviously change over time. That is where I have it right now. A lot of thought went into this video, guys. A lot of a lot of hours of work trying to figure out where I was going to place these guys. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I see a lot of people have been saying that they think the list has been pretty solid. So for that, I'm actually very surprised. But either way, guys, put uh, what you think about the list and what you thought about the series in the comments below. Uh, like I said, I thought a lot of you guys were just going to absolutely hate on it. Whenever you make a top list, people usually hate it. But hey, it's been lit. Make sure you guys leave a like. Leaving a like helps the video a lot. Uh, much love, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.